coming up. This iconic rail car needs a ride to its new home. It's going to be quite an undertaking, but the guys here, yeah, they can handle it. They'll use heavy metal and a little horsepower to get the job done. Plus, after that heavy haul, we'll look at why this is such an important moment. That's all next. sunrise on a cold November morning at Marta's Avondale Yard in Metro Atlanta, Georgia. It's the start of a new day for commuters as mainline trains run high above. But down here, some Atlanta transportation icons have reached the end of the line. However, one of the cars is about to begin a new chapter. So today we are moving a first generation Marta rail car from uh, MARTA to the Southeastern Railway Museum, which is Georgia's official transportation history museum. This is a, a big day because it's the first time that uh, a MARTA rail car has basically left MARTA property and gone to a museum. There's no doubt this is an interesting machine and moving it is going to be just as memorable. First, it's time to call on an unusual member of the MARTA fleet, this French locomotive. MARTA has a few diesels on its roster, but this one is by far the most unique. But we're here to see what it's pulling. For many years, this was the face of Atlanta Transit. I'm sure visitors and residents will immediately recognize the three bright stripes. The two cars that are being pulled out are in great condition. Several years ago, they were fixed up and shown off to people at a transit expo. Our bus team at, at Browns Mill did an amazing job of restoring the interior of this car to look as much as possible like it did in 1980, which includes even carpet, which our rail cars did originally have carpet and padded seats. The padded seats are gone, but yeah, the carpet is still here. MARTA's heavy rail system began operations in 1979. It was cutting edge with modern stations, rail vehicles, and automatic train control. Most of MARTA's original rail cars are still in service, although they've been overhauled over the years. Car number 509 is the one in the spotlight today. It began its service life in 1981. It'll be the one making the 21-mile journey from Avondale to the museum in Duluth, Georgia. But before it leaves, the team here will have to do some switching. They need to get it onto this track, where a ramp and specialized trailer are waiting. And this isn't the first time the team here has done this. MARTA is currently preparing for the future. With the impending arrival of the new fleet, we've already started to tra clear track space, so we have to make room. We only have so much room in our rail yards, and so this is part of that process. MARTA's new train cars are being made by Swiss company Stadler Rail. They will be four-car sets with open gangways, meaning passengers can easily walk from one end to the other. Meanwhile, 509 is in position and can be winched up onto the trailer and prepared for its trip. So now we have some time to look at some of the features that make cars like 509 stand out from the rest of MARTA's fleet. So there's several things that are unique. Uh, one is the fact that it's an aluminum built car. This order was the only order of uh, cars that MARTA had that were made of aluminum, but car shells made of aluminum. Also, the car is a product of France. Well, at least a lot of it is. Along with MARTA's other original rail cars, 509 was built by a company called Société Franco-Belge, and they had big ambitions. Franco Belge thought this was their entry into the U.S. market. I think you could uh, probably assume that they underbid in, uh, in order to kind of get the MARTA order, to get a foothold. Franco Belge would ultimately go bankrupt while building MARTA's rail cars and would be acquired by Alstom. They agreed to finish the order. But this car is not 100% French. It has a Rockwell International Propulsion System, and the trucks are the same design that you'll find under Amtrak's Amfleet cars. Okay, there's one more thing that separates 509 and the others like it from the rest of MARTA's fleet. If you look closely at the trains running today, you'll notice that they are married pairs and each car has one operating cab. That's not the case with cars like 509. These are what MARTA called C cars. This car has cabs on both ends and is a single unit. And the idea was you could run a single car or even create odd numbered consists uh, by having these cars. It wasn't a huge success because MARTA is a third rail system. 
you know, there's, there's gaps in the third rail, and if you run a single car, you risk gapping out the car. Only 20 cars with this design were built. So those are some of the technical features, but what about the industrial design here? When these cars were delivered, they were globally the state of the art in um, rail mass transit vehicles. And you also see when you look at the cars, the end design is very iconic, uh, it's very 1970s. There's a company called Sunberg Ferrar that Marta retained to do its uh, industrial design. They laid out the interior, they laid out the end caps of the car. Marta was very concerned they didn't just want to have boxy subway cars like a lot of other systems had. They want to have something that, that said Marta. And the, the three stripes on the front, you know, was kind of internationally recognized, I think, as, as Atlanta and as the, uh, the Marta mark, if you will. This rendering shows the original look of Marta's rail cars would have been even bolder. And by the way, if the design here looks familiar, that's because Sunberg Ferrar also did work for other agencies like the Washington Metro and BART in California. Back at Avondale Yard, it's almost time to leave. The company making this massive move today is called Silk Road Specialized, and hauling transit vehicles is what they do. There's no doubt this is a wide load, but they've got what they need to get out of tight spaces. The back wheels of the trailer here are steerable. And this Peterbilt truck has plenty of power. The rail car it's pulling weighs in at 81,000 pounds. And now it's time to get this thing out on the road. This is definitely something you do not see every day. At this point, 509 is just yards away from the museum, but we've got to wait on a few Norfolk Southern trains to pass before it can move over this railroad crossing. Here's a northbound. And here's a southbound. No problems getting the car across the tracks and to its new home. Now it's time to unload and reflect. Today's donation really is a sign that Marta does value its history. This moment has been many years in the making and it's taken so many different people to take uh, different steps along the way to get here. And it's great that we've now reached the point where we can now uh, partner together, donate the car to the museum and preserve it along with our historic bus fleet so that the history of Marta is preserved along with the history of um, the railroads here at the museum. It's important to kind of pause and think about why did Atlanta create a rail system? Why did all that investment take place? And what effect does it have? And what does that mean for the future? And I think having artifacts and having these things around from back then help us conceptualize and kind of also think back to the optimism of those years in the 70s and the 80s when that investment was taking place and maybe hopefully try to harness some of that optimism again for uh, investments in transit in Atlanta.